everyone! I am back today with another installment of five things I wanted that I didn't buy. We're gonna flash back all the way to Black Friday. In the morning after I woke up, I saw that I had a Black Friday email from well.ca, so I thought I would scroll through to see if there were any staples on sale that I needed. Dr. Bronner's soap, tooth powder, maybe some groceries from Bob's Red Mill. What I didn't expect to want was a fantastic deal on Beauty Blender. This was a deal on four beauty blenders and I think I had just done my makeup inventory, so I knew I didn't need any beauty blenders. I have enough to last probably another year, year and a half or so. Adding four more beauty blenders to my collection was not something that was on my radar, but the deal was so good that I was very, very tempted. I quickly X'd out of the screen. When I remembered to take the screenshot hours later, I think they had actually adjusted the price. So the initial price that I saw was probably a pricing error because when I calculated out the price per beauty blender, I think it was closer to around $12. So I feel like the price was $47 to $48 when I initially saw the deal. But when I went back to take the screenshot, it had gone up to $55.98, which is still a good deal for four beauty blenders but because the price went up and I had remembered a lower price in my mind that was definitely a deal breaker for me I decided not to buy them which was the right decision because I didn't need any more beauty blenders and the thought of even having to do my makeup inventory next year and count I don't know what I would have at the time, maybe six beauty blenders, whereas right now I have, I think it is three in my collection. Thought of that just didn't appeal to me and I'm so happy I missed out on that deal. The second item on my list of things I wanted but didn't buy, these were actually two sets that I wanted. I put them in my cart to take advantage of my $25 off Sephora promotion. Irrespective of what I wanted, that promotion is already worse than it was in previous years because it used to be $25 off a $50 purchase I looked and I settled on two sets that I was pretty sure I wanted and the total was $80 so I would have gotten close to the 33 and a third discount. First set was by Tatcha and what appealed to me about this set was that I hadn't tried either of the two items but they both got good reviews on the Sephora website. So I thought to myself what a perfect opportunity and quite a reasonable price to try these two items. The other set was by Kopari and I've actually purchased this set in the past and I really like it. To be quite honest I still have some product kicking around from this set. I think I've finished two items, I'm in the process of using up one item and the final item which is the lip gloss I haven't even touched at all so I really didn't need to go out and buy another one of these sets but because I had a good experience with this brand and this set in the past it was very very tempting in the end I decided not to take advantage of this deal and I metaphorically put everything back on the shelf that was in my cart my third item is a big one and if you follow along with my channel you'll know that since the Apple keynote I have been interested in the iPhone 10R I was intrigued by the keynote when the phone came out I read reviews about it I I went to look at it in store multiple times and I had essentially decided to buy this phone. A funny thing happened though when I was at that 10 day silent meditation retreat, I had a lot of time to think about all sorts of different things and one of the things I thought about was do I really need this phone? I was at the silent meditation retreat where phones were not allowed and I found that I didn't actually miss my phone all that much. I missed the people that the phone connected me to but the device itself really wasn't a factor for me. I started thinking about the price of the phone, what I really use my phone for, why I need this new phone, and I was pretty on the fence when I left the meditation retreat. When I got home and started catching up with hubby, it turned out that he actually received a free phone when I was away. This is a phone from a Chinese company that he is testing out. With the addition of this new free phone, Hubby now had three working phones in his collection and he definitely can't use all of them simultaneously. So he loaned me one of his phones, which happened to be a Samsung phone. So what I'm doing now is I'm using my existing iPhone 6S Plus as my phone. That is where I have my SIM card, so I use it for all of the phone functions. And then my hubby's Samsung phone, I use pretty much strictly for 
photos and video. But now I'm able to get by with what we have existing in our collection instead of buying the new iPhone XR, which saved me $1,099 plus tax because I was gonna go for the middle model with the um, medium storage. The fourth thing I wanted but didn't buy was a waffle maker. My friend and I, for our annual holiday extravaganza, went to a waffle place for dessert after we had a really nice dinner, and I was struck by how much I love waffles. Now I have a waffle maker already, but it makes mini cute Hello Kitty waffles, and I don't really use it all that much because it's a very time-consuming process to make so many tiny waffles. What I wanted was that huge Belgian waffle maker so I could put ice cream on it and nuts and caramel sauce and just go all out and pig out on a huge waffle. I looked one up on Amazon and lo and behold, they are very reasonably priced. There was one for, I think it was $24.99 and it got good reviews. When I started thinking about the Belgian waffle maker, I also thought about the waffle maker that hubby and I used in Iceland. I use this pretty much every morning once I discovered it. This waffle maker makes the best thin waffles. They're about this big in total, but then you can cut up the individual pieces into little heart-shaped waffles. These waffles were so delicious with just a little bit of honey and coconut. But when I looked up this waffle maker on Amazon, it was quite a bit more expensive. I thought back to a kitchen gadget I had purchased after the meditation retreat. You guys know this is the Apple Wedger. And I thought about how that enhanced my life, made it so easy to eat apples. But a waffle maker isn't exactly something that will help me further my health and wellness goals. I asked myself, do I really want to make it easier for myself? to eat waffles? And the answer is no. I want waffles to be an occasional treat, something I have to go out to get because I don't want that readily accessible in my home. I don't wanna be eating waffles every day, every other day, or even every week. So why would I bring a waffle maker into my home? With that thought, I quickly banished the idea and off it went into the bucket of things I wanted but didn't buy. The fifth and final item that I wanted that I didn't buy was a flight to Portugal. Portugal has been on my list of places I want to go for probably upwards of a year now. It really became high on my list of places I wanted to go when I started becoming very obsessed with port. I wanted to go to the Douro Valley to see how it was made, to stomp grapes, to taste a ton of port. I was planning to take a trip to Portugal in the fall of this year, so when this deal came up, I was very, very, very tempted. The price was amazing, the dates I wanted were there, but I couldn't really seem to get my act together or my motivation up to decide where we wanted to fly in and out of, how long we wanted to stay for, if hubby would go for a shorter vacation and I would go for a little bit of a longer trip and perhaps spend a couple of weeks on my own in Portugal. Usually I would be right on it and I would be able to make a decision like that, but I think because I'm not really in the travel mindset right now. So even though the price of the flight was a lot lower than what I would have paid, the price of the flight plus the price of the hotel plus train tickets or renting a car plus restaurants plus pet sitting, all of these things add up to a lot of money that you don't really need to spend if you don't have the travel bug. Hubby and I did talk it over and we decided ultimately to just let the deal pass. He had originally sent me the deal. My husband is a very big enabler. Maybe we'll still end up going to Portugal this year and I may regret having let this deal expire if I end up booking at a higher price. But for now, I am very happy that I passed on the flight. That is going to be it for the five things I wanted recently but didn't buy. Let me know down below if you were tempted by anything and if you were able to be strong and hold out on clicking that purchase button or handing over your credit card. I would love to hear about some of the deals that you found very enticing but decided not to buy in the end. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will be back very soon with another one. Until then, please take care and bye for now.